I hate to be the person who's uh, throwing a wet blanket on, on people's enthusiasm, but my general uh, feeling of speed reading is that it probably doesn't work in the way that it's advertised. So Excellent. I actually wrote an article, if, you, uh, if anyone wants to Google it, it's called uh, I Was Wrong About Speed Reading Here Are the Facts, because I was initially an advocate of it. So I found this was maybe oh, 15 years ago. I, someone suggested speed reading and I got a speed reading book and I tried it out and it kind of worked for me. I, I felt like mm. I was doing it. And, and so this led me to kind of say, Oh, you should be doing this to speed read and, and, you know, just based on my private experiences. And then only, you know, this was maybe four or five years ago, I decided, okay, let's actually look at a lot of the research from people who have studied it. And the basic finding is not that I don't want to say that, uh, you know, it's impossible to do anything like speed reading, but rather that the comprehension trade-off, so the amount that you are missing when you are speed reading, the amount of ideas and facts and knowledge that you are not actually internalizing is a lot lower than a lot of people think. And so there's a kind of a self-deception here that you think you're having perfect comprehension or 90% comprehension, but maybe you're having more like 20% comprehension. Mm. And so, uh, I'll, I'll say two things. So first I'll talk about kind of why this is, and then I'll talk about what you can do if you want to read faster. So the first why this is, is that a lot of the ideas behind speed reading is that it's primarily inhibited by your kind of eye movements or another theory is that it's by sub vocalization. So the fact that you're having to say the words sort of under your breath, so to speak, that this is what's inhibiting you from reading more quickly. Mm. And modern theories of cognitive science suggest that instead it's probably what's called working memory, which is not a physical movement, but something inside of your mind, which is parsing together what's happening, making sense of the paragraphs, making sense of the page, this kind of thing. And that's sort of the primary bottleneck, not so much eye movements and being able to see things rapidly. If you moved a thousand times the speed, you'd still have the same working memory. And that would be the thing that would constrain you uh, mm. from being able to learn. So that's why it's implausible to say, I can read a thousand pages a minute or people who do that, because uh, the things that we know about the brain suggest that you are not, the problem isn't, you know, maybe you could even move your eyes and this kind of thing uh, over, well, not that fast, but you could move them at a faster speed, but then it would be the problem of getting it into your head. So where speed reading tends to be more effective is when you are okay with a much smaller area of, uh, of comprehension. So mm. if you are okay getting only the gist of something, so only that 20% or your, so that's sort of skimming, um, which is, I would say speed reading is a form of kind of structured skimming, or you could have what's called scanning where you're looking for something in particular. So you, you only care about, well, I want to see where they're talking about this in the book and then you go and find that. That's also mm. helpful. So I don't want to give the impression that you should you always have to read word by word and save it. There's different speeds, but I think they have different purposes. I don't think the idea that you can just use some mechanical technique and it will just make you read a lot faster. Now, how do you read faster? Well, given this working memory bottleneck, the idea that your ability to understand what's being said, parse it, make sense of it, that this is probably the bottleneck for most uh, reasonably skilled readers. Um, the best way that you can read faster is to read more because the more mm. you read, the more chunks you have of common patterns, common ideas, common words, even maybe sentence fragments, you can parse it more and more quickly. So the people you see who really can process huge amounts of books, they can just read enormous volumes and understand everything. Those are people that read a lot of books. So, so that's, that's kind of like the, the kind of, well, that's not as not what you wanted to hear maybe in terms of having a great technique. But I think it also suggests that if you do feel like you are not a very skilled reader right now, let's say you only read maybe two, 300 words per minute and you find it really difficult and it's very frustrating. If you read more, if you just invest in reading more of the kind of books you want to read, you will get faster and you will yeah. be able to read it more fluently. And so in some ways reading it, it's a little bit like learning another language that as you get, as you do it more, you get better at it. And so I think if anyone's interested in the, that research, you can definitely check out that article. And I mean, my word's not the final word on it. So you're free to try it out yourself. I know some yeah. people are quite committed to speed reading, but I do think um, there are a lot of effective techniques for learning more effectively that we have do have some research behind that and speed reading doesn't seem to be one of them at least right now. Mm. 